Hello, welcome back. Uh, here's another exercise. So now we're looking at uh, hypothesis testing on a single population variance. Uh, again, I've kind of stolen a problem from my module nine exercises where we are testing uh, single population means. So there we're testing basically the location. Where does that distribution exist? Now we're testing the shape. So we're looking at the variance of that distribution. Uh, so we'll go through this problem. This one's going to be a little bit different from the previous exercises we've done on single population variances. I suspect you'll see where that difference is when we get to it. Uh, and uh, the, much of it will be similar aside from one little, little subtle difference here. Uh, also in this exercise, we're going to include a confidence interval. And I think because this video is already going to be a bit, little bit longer, I think I'll leave a separate video uh, for that confidence interval. So let's get into this uh, and we'll see how it goes. So here we're looking at an instructor who has produced a series of problems and accompanying videos. Uh, sounds familiar, I think. Uh, in hopes of improving a student's understanding of the course content. Having taught the course many times, he calculates the average to be 71% and determines the population standard deviation to be 0.12 or 12 percentage points. At the end of the following semester, his class of 40 students who had access to the video walkthroughs had an average grade of 74.6. He also calculated the sample standard deviations to be 15 percentage points. Using a level of significance of 0.5% test to determine whether or not this assumption is correct. Okay, so let's put together our null and error alternative first. Now, I'm going to actually formulate this in two different ways. I hope it doesn't cause any confusion, but we can set this up either as a test on variance or if you want a test on standard deviation. It really doesn't make a difference. It'll affect you know, a couple of the values here, but uh, it doesn't matter which one you do. The exercise will be the same. The formulas, the testing, the process, everything's the same. Uh, it's just a matter of which one is easier to talk about, the variance or standard deviation. So here the, the data is given to us in terms of the standard deviation. So I wanna test, is that assumption correct? So here's that, that hypothesized value. And I'm not testing to see if we are less than or greater than that value. We just wanna see are we correct or not in that assumption. So this is gonna be a two-tailed test. So it's either correct or it's incorrect. Okay, and so this is really the difference between this problem and the previous problems that we've done on variance is that this is our first two-tailed problem. So then that would be the same here if I'm testing variance, that would be also a two-tailed test. But now we have to adjust and that hypothesized value has got to be 0.12 squared. So that corresponding hypothesized value for a test on variance is 0.0144. Okay, so these two tests are perfectly comparable. Okay, and we'll do it at the O5 level of significance. Okay, good. Our test statistic. So chi squared n minus one s squared over the hypothesized value. This is going to be our sample size was 40 minus one times s squared our sample standard deviation was here, 0.15 squared, divided by the hypothesized value is 0.12 squared. And this will give us a value, where's that calculator? So 39 times 0.15 squared, divided by 0.12 squared equals 60.94. 60.94. Okay, there's our test statistic. That, was, that wasn't that was too, too bad. Now let's go get our p-value. So let's go to our chi-squared tables. We have, what are our degrees of freedom here? Degrees of freedom, n minus one. Here we have 39 degrees of freedom. So when we go to our chi-squared tables, here's our degrees of freedom. And look at that, we don't have 39, so we'll approximate it with 40. This pen always acts funny when I draw towards the bottom of the screen. I don't know why. So we are only looking at that row of critical values. Hopefully this will work and it gets a little weird. 
There's our row of critical values, and here's these probabilities. Now, here we have only upper tail probabilities. We have to keep that in mind. That might influence uh, our, our results here. So our test statistic, just to remind us, was 60.94. So we're looking in that row of critical values. Where's 60.94? Somewhere in between these two values. Just like the t-tables, we're getting approximate p-values here, right? So the relevant probability is going to be between these two probabilities, 0 0.01 and 0 0.025. Now, is that our p-value? Again, when we're doing two-tailed tests, as we're doing here, we always have to multiply that probability by two. That rule is the same, whether it's a test on means, proportions, or here, variances. Uh, we always have to multiply the probability by two in order to obtain our p-value. So our p-value then is going to be between 0.01 divided by two and 0.025 divided by two. So it's going to be p-value will be less than 0 0.05, greater than 0 0.02. So there's our final result. We have our p-value, I'll just rewrite it, less than 0 0.05, greater than 0 0.02. Can we draw a conclusion from that? Well, yes, we can. Our level of significance was 0 0.05. Our p-value is less than 0.05. The p-value rejection rule is always the same. If it's less than or equal to alpha, we reject. So here it's less than alpha. We can reject. And again, it's both of these. It makes no difference. We can reject the null hypotheses. Uh, in both cases, we're saying that we have evidence to show that this assumption uh, is not correct. The assumption of a standard deviation of 0.12 is not correct, or the assumption of the um, variance, the population variance of 0 0.0144 is not correct. Our evidence states that it is something other than those values. So that's it. We've got our solution for part C. Now our critical value approach. This one will be a little bit different because again of how this table is put together. So I'm just gonna scribble stuff out here to make some space. So we have to pay attention to how the table is produced. And this table, again, is giving us the area in the upper tail. So when we're using the critical value approach, it really is the same as the T or the Z distribution. We have two critical values on either side We'll reject if our test statistic is larger than the large value or smaller than the small value. Now, when we were working with the T and the Z distribution, these values were the same in absolute value. It was plus or minus 1.96, plus or minus 2, plus or minus, right? The number was always the same, and it was plus or minus that number. But of course, now this is an asymmetric distribution with no negative values, so that's not going to be the case. So let's get to it. We have our level of significance, remember, was 0.05. So we want alpha divided by 2 in the upper tail. We want alpha divided by 2 in the lower tail. So this is going to be 0 0.025. This is going to be 0 0.025. Now, getting this upper tail value, alpha divided by 2, that one's straightforward because these probabilities are all upper tail probabilities. So if I find this probability of 0.025, again, we have 40 degrees of freedom. So I'm gonna follow this down and I get to my upper tail critical value, 59.342 is my upper tail. So my test statistics larger than that, then we can reject. Now the lower tail value is a little bit different to find again because of this. If I want 0 0.025 in the lower tail, then the critical value that I want is the one that corresponds to one minus alpha by two in the upper tail. So that region in the upper tail is gonna be one minus alpha by two, leaving me with alpha divided by two in the lower tail. So this is going to be one minus 0 0.025 
So this is that critical value that corresponds with 0.975 in the upper tail. So here's that 0.975 and follow this down and I have, I can clean up some of this. This gives me a lower tail critical value of 24.433. So we'll reject if our test statistic is larger than 59.342 or smaller than 24.432. Now our test statistic was 60.94 and so we're larger than the upper tail critical value so we can reject so we, we already knew our p-value approach already gave us that conclusion but here now we've confirmed it using our critical value approach we can reject that null hypothesis and say that our assumption uh, on that standard deviation is in fact incorrect or is false Okay, so that's all there is to it for the test. Uh, I'm 11 minutes into this video, so I, I'm going to stop here and I'll produce a second video uh, just to focus on that confidence interval estimate. Okay, so thank you for watching and I'll see you again shortly. Bye-bye.